Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you another Warcraft 3 replay. It seems like, well, it seems like a lot of you guys out there want more Warcraft 3 anyways, and I am willing to oblige as long as the views do keep up. So, um, oh wait, no, hold on. I need to go ahead and go into the ally mode. There you go. It is going to be pink versus yellow here on Turtle Rock. Now, um, I did see this particular game. I saw the I saw the names, and I'm just like, how much more geeked out could you be for a two v two? We have Yumiko spawning as the pink human player at the eleven o'clock position. We have Tho spawning as the undead player here at what I'll call the ten o'clock position. I thought it was Night Elf. Okay, so he's playing undead. Meanwhile, we have Ted, the master of undead lately playing undead and finally we have orc rounding it off so fly playing as the well wait, let me just go ahead and set the colors to yellow and pink as well so this is definitely gonna be an interesting interesting matchup and series i hope you guys do enjoy it 2v2 games are generally much faster at the two minute mark is when everything starts to go really really crazy and yes we're talking about two minutes in real time not this crazy starcraft 2 two minutes as we are now looking at this peon heading out across the map now i am doing a lot more warcraft 3 replays just because um hearthstone was released and i'm trying to reimmerse myself in the Warcraft universe. A lot of people have been making notes saying, you know what, maybe maybe I'm a Warcraft boy at heart, even though I was exposed to Starcraft a lot more than Warcraft 2. Um, maybe my gaming roots just go back to Warcraft, and that's why I'm good at Hearthstone and um, fairly better at casting Warcraft 3. Let's take a look at the peon. Is going to be heading up the ramp here, taking a look around. We can see Militia Creeping will be coming in as the Archmage is going to try and go after this particular creep camp. I do not believe it was sped built. No, it was not. As the Blade Master now heading off to the north, it is going to spot this peon here, or the peon is going to spot the Militia Creeping as... Hold on, give me one second. All right, welcome back. I'm sorry. Um, that was a long delay for me, but a very short delay for you, I'm sure. As we now come back in, we can see creeping coming in here by Yumiko. Going to go ahead and creep out this turtle creep camp. Meanwhile, the Blade Master of Fly is going to be coming in and trying to do some harassment. And we'll see what the strategy is here in this 2v2. Now, in 2v2s, there's two ways. There's a number of ways that you can play the game. You can either play the game in a straight up 2v2 mode where you already have your two armies going up against your opponent's two armies. In addition to that, you can have the two separate 1v1 games where you try to engage against your op uh, one opponent while your opponent or your teammate also engages against another. Finally, you can have the 2v1 approach where two players tries, tries to attack and put pressure on the one player and then it is up to the other player and other team to decide whether they want to try and defend with another player or with that home field advantage, just go ahead and have the other player creep up and gain experience. Both, both options are rather viable as we now see Ted getting a little bit bum rushed here by some um, water elementals, but the footmen are not going to be able to make their way inside that well. You can see that the footmen are currently just stuck. Are they going to... Oh, and he does find a hole, a gaping hole in the middle here. It looks as though, yes, the footman will get taken down. Give me one second again. All right, welcome back once more. The problem with trying to do all of your casts and your casts during your lunch break is, um, well, if people have questions for you from work, you still need a cat or you still need to answer those calls. Let's take a look at what's going back over here. Blade Master chasing down a footman will be able to slice and dice him. One more strike. Wait, there it is. There's that windwalk strike for that bonus 40 damage. Meanwhile, a footman hiding over around by a gargantuan sea turtle as the archmage now making their way over. So far, these the teams have not been doing any straight up engagement and have not really been using the two v two um, two v two heavy pressure strategies to their um, um, to their advantage all too much. Turtle Rock is one of those maps though where it is split east versus west, and it looks like Yumiko is taking this opportunity to actually steal some creeps and does pick up. Um, does pick up some nice creep there. Is he going to be able to get down his own water mantle? No, the water mantle does give experience to the death knight as we now see another death knight coming in. All right, we may see a little bit of a gank here, but that is way too many minions on the yellow side 
for this death knight to stay alive that death knight now looking to back off here as the archmage is trying to just poke apart and get some shots here does get another bit of experience as he the archmage now seen at level two with brilliance or meanwhile footman um excuse me crypt fiends and one footman there you go didn't make me a liar now trying to engage and push back this blade master the blade master is running around once more so many heroes so much action to follow trying to follow a 1600 apm game is nearly impossible as there are four players playing this all at the same time. There you go. Another quick creep jack there. Stealing um, one of the ogre warriors. Level 3 creep camp. Getting experience and um, rather quickly. Meanwhile, the death knight still trying to get in some shots here. And both sides just dealing a lot of damage to each other. And both sides losing a lot of units. I'm surprised at this. But at the same time... Not so much, as I understand the fact that with so much going on at the same time, it is nearly impossible to try to micro everything and not lose a single unit. You can see this Crypt Fiend now trying to get away. Archmage does have Boots of Speed alongside that Death Knight, so that Death Knight does make that Archmage move very, very quickly. Meanwhile, that Archmage also has plus 9 attack due to the Claws of Attack plus 6 and Mantle of Intelligence, making that Archmage a little bit strong, or actually much stronger in terms of basic attack. That plus 9 attack is a flat um is a flat 30 percent increase in average damage that is how much more damage that archmage is doing now per attack just because that archmage is re relatively weak early on in terms of his base attack the water elemental really adding much more dps there Water Elemental now making its way forward. Is it going to be able to take down those Crypt Fiends? No. The Water Elemental is one of the slower units onto the battlefield. As you can see, that Water Elemental now making their way over. Blood Mage being added as a second hero from Yumiko. So are we going to have a Mana Battery strategy? Yes, we are. And with that Mana Battery strategy, it is going to take away Mana from the Death Knight and give it to the Death Knight. That is going to be um, rather dangerous as you can see that the Blood Mage already down to zero mana pretty much. No, wants to make sure it doesn't get to zero and that was a very important play. I don't know if you noticed, but the Death Knight, the Blood Mage purposely stopped siphoning mana just so that he could actually cast another siphon mana and get it off of an enemy hero. Very, very um, smart micro skills there as we now see, oh, what was that? Um... I, I believe that was, yes, Frost Armor now being cast all over the place. Death Knight getting off another Speed Squirrel being used. Both sides doing everything. And I'm just going to try and stop explaining everything and just watch and enjoy the game. Tell about who's coming out ahead. The Crypt Fiends are um, doing a good job focusing. And the Blood Mage is shutting down other heroes while empowering his own. That is very important as that Death Knight has enough mana to come in with another death coil it looks like the crazy crazy fight has come to an end as the spell breakers and yumiko yumiko and tho are once again taking the advantage here and really really gutsy coming in and trying to creep out this creep camp while the uh, opponent is there you can see the watch reward now being placed down and with that watch reward there the blade master will always be revealed and this is going to be a very bad place for that blade master to try and fight Death Knight with double dust of appearance. Archmage with also with a single charge. As you can see, the Shadow Hunter being forced to pull back again. Blood Mage is currently sitting at 60 mana and holding. Needs to get a bit more before he can pump mana into another unit there. Also, the Lich is at maximum mana as well. So that Lich, and um, with that beautiful, beautiful Frost Armor, is going to really slow down any Blade Masters. Beautiful play and positioning by the pink team, making sure that um, any sort of attack or creep or creep jack is going to come at a weird angle and not expose the units and you can see that the yellow team had tried to come in from the far side and perhaps pincer them in that alley there behind the bushes that did not work as you now see one gargantuan sea turtle 589 does have dust of appearance on him as the Archmage once again comes in, Blood Mage comes in with another Siphon Mana. And even though he's not really netting that much mana, he is denying mana on the Death Knight. Um, or was denying mana on the Death Knight there. Uh, maybe he used a potion for just one split second, allowing him to be able to cast that Death Coil. Archmage now very low on hit points, down to 47. You can see that the Obsidian Statue needs to heal up that Archmage rather quickly. And that Death Knight now trying to make its way over. The Death Knight does not have enough mana for a Death Coil, as the Death Coil does hit the Lich in order to heal him back up. 
Now Archmage, very, very dangerous, very low on hit points. Is he going to be able to stay alive long enough as the Death Knight's still trying to push through here? Blood Mage down to 11 mana, or sorry, the Death Knight down to 11 mana. Blade Master at 65. Is it going to perhaps get siphoned mana here? No, the Spellbreakers, the 9 mana as well. And all of the heroes pretty much are out of mana except for Fly. Fly does have Healing Wave. Most likely, no, it's Hex. And with only Hex coming in, that's not going to be that beneficial in order to only shut down that Blood Mage. All right, Blood Mage now coming back in. Archmage pretty much back up to full. There is a Death Coil on a Spirit Walker. It gets taken down. Gargantuan Sea Turtle will fall as we are looking at Tho taking this best. Tho and Yumiko taking this best of three series. 2v2s, so entertaining. Level 3 on the Death Knight. And I believe that's pretty much going to be it. The tipping point has been reached. Tho and Yumiko should be able to come back in with a very strong army. Nothing's really stopping them. Blood Mage hitting that level 2. Can even get banished down in order to take out the... Um, take out the Blade Master from doing any any sort of serious damage. As you can see that the Blood Mage is now simply backing off. All right, let's take a look here. Back at Obsidian Statues doing their thing. Level four, three now on the Archmage. Archmage did get level wa uh, two Water Elementals. V makes a lot of sense, even though level two Brunator would make sense as well. Both sides are fighting. As we can see, the last Sea Turtle has gone down. This may be the last fight. Fly now trying to push in. Crypt Fiends now Blizzard coming in. Oh, it's a 1-1-1 one, one, one build on the Archmage to get Blizzard. All right, Blizzard could come down across multiple units there. There's a Flame Strike, and wow, no Banish at all. Now just a massive AoE as the Crypt Fiends are trying to f survive this fight. So far, the um, Blood Mage um, and, oh, that beautiful, beautiful 1-2 hit. Blade Master gets taken down. Um, the Burning Ground, what's it called? Uh, not on Flame Strike, I guess, yeah. Flame Strike damage over time still coming in. You can see that the Death Knight down to 6 hit points does get taken down. Those are the two starting heroes for Yellow, and that should be GG. There it is. Ted does call GG in Game 1. So does Fly. So Tho and Yumiko taking Game 1 in absolute style. Please stay tuned for game two.